Lost in the shuffle of the 3-1 to one win for the Wild over the Islanders was a tweet that caught my eye in regards to a player the Wild may be interested in acquiring. We will discuss more today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find Locked On Wild each and every day of the week on your favorite podcast platforms for absolutely no charge. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, Zach Zeman is here to discuss a name that we weren't necessarily looking at as a potential acquisition for the Wild this year, but we're going to break down the possibility that the Wild go on the defensive side for a name such as Jacob Chikrin. So we'll just start right there. Uh, Zach, welcome back. Uh, one of our regular contributors to Lockdown Wild, and we broke down the win uh, against the Islanders. A gritty kind of a game for the Wild, but they did what they needed to do to win. And I'm scrolling through Twitter, as uh, as I'm sure you were as the game's going on. And an account that I follow, NHL Watcher, had this to say uh, that caught my eye. Bruce, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Garyosh at the intermission on TSN said that the Senators definitely have interest in Matt Dumba. Garyosh found out today that... Uh, the GM of the Senators, Mr. Dorian, was in Minnesota last Wednesday to get an up-close and personal look at Matt Dumba. The Wild may not be able to sign Dumba, won't, <laughs> <laughs> and do not want to lose him for nothing. So that's that's part one. The second tweet says, Gary Osh adds that there is talk that the Wild have shown some interest in Jacob Chikrin. So if they trade Dumba, they may go out and try to acquire Chikrin from Arizona to fill the spot. Um, again, not surprised at the uh, at the possibility that the Wild are are not gonna re-sign Matt Dumba. We've we've felt that that is probably the writing on the wall for a while. But Jacob Chikrin has entered the chat. What do you think? Jacob Chikrin has entered the chat once again. This man has been in these trade rumors for almost years, it feels like. Um, you know, but it's interesting to me because the the Senators are interested in him or interested in Matt Dumba. And, you know, it's it's kind of – it's interesting to say that, you know, maybe Billy Guerin doesn't want a third rounder for Matt Dumba. He wants more and he wants a package or something. So he's going to, you know, talking to, you know, Chikrin, see what's up there and – you know, it's 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 interesting that um, you know you know it's clear Dumba doesn't really have that much of trade capital. Um, it just depends on how much the Wild want back, how much the Wild can piece together to make a trade. I mean, we've seen Chikrin in these trade rumors uh, for for years, and you know Arizona's asked for several first rounders, several prospects. You know, un unrealistic almost. Um, you know, trade packages for them. Um, you know, and Chikrin makes like four and a half mil. It's just, there's a lot, there's a lot they want back. And it's clear that they are, you know, in this rebuilding phase, um, trying to get a new whole thing figured out in Arizona. You know, they got the whole new stadium. Now they're trying to get a whole new roster, um, you know, to fill the spot. You know, it's all about how much Bill Guerin is interested in, in packaging together. And I feel like it could be intriguing. You know, the Wild do have that, uh, those prospects that, you know, could be, could be sendable. Um, it's just a it just matters on you know it's how much they want Chikrin back. Chikrin's got that eye on the power play, and I think that's you know after tonight's um, Islanders game, it's clear that the power play was struggling. Uh, it just depends on how much or in, and how quick you want to pull the trigger on this deal, but it's very very intriguing. So, I I don't want to. I'm not trying to get my hopes up 
but a scenario has entered my head in which this is all feasible. And so entertain me for a moment, if you will, as I piece this together. So you have, you've got the senators and the Oilers who are both primarily interested in Matt Dumba. You have Arizona down here and you have the Minnesota wilds over here. Bidding war between the Senators and the Oilers. Ken Holland is, they need help defensively. The Oilers do. And either the Senators or the Oilers, the thing that they acquire in this would be Matt Dumba. The thing that the Wilds could be looking to acquire for this, in this deal, a three-team deal, would be Chikrin. And whatever it takes for the Wilds to make it happen, whatever it takes for the Oilers or the Senators to make it happen, converge it and just tag team effort, give it to Arizona. Split the cost down the middle. See, this is what we do. This is this is what all podcasters do is we speculate and we, and we think about what the heck could possibly be going on in these talks. But man, it's it's honestly, I think it's all in the wild here. It's it's all about how much they want to give up. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, a couple of years ago, there's like Greenway talks. There's been several other like future talks, like Rossi, you know, first rounders, and and I feel like you know Arizona could want all that. And it's like, um, you know, I, I bet Billy Garen's a stubborn GM. I bet he is very down to earth, and he he gets what he gets, and he doesn't want to take too much, you know. Uh, negotiating that's just what i think of him because he's just billy g and that's what we you know we can all only see out of him but you know it's it's how far i mean i said i mean i said greenway but it's like it, it could be anyone it's like how far do you want to go to break up the current roster you have to to get a defensive structure so let's let's just th- see what happens here we get we lose dumba right and you you have brodeen spurgeon and you got middleton and uh, what Goligoski then, and 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 so then I think you have a, a solid defensive core, and then the, it's almost what behind them doesn't really matter anymore. You know the flurry Gustafson, and you know Jesper Wallstead, is he going to come up? Blah blah blah. Talk, you know that can kind of get pushed if Chickering comes in here. But then you also lose. You would have to lose. I'm assuming you would have to lose your first rounder, your second rounder, your blah blah blah, whatever whatever Arizona thinks is necessary, which I think they're going to want a lot because that's what they've been wanting the last couple of years. And that's why he hasn't really gone anywhere is because teams are stubborn to give it up. You know, sorry, this is all coming at you fast, but hopefully you guys can kind of hear what my whole brain jogging memory, whatever is going on inside my head right now. It thinks, um, how far does Billy, Billy Garen want to go? You know, it's, it, it's clear that the power play was struggling tonight um, you know, they went like 0 for 5 with like two shots. That's very vague in my head right now. Uh, something something along those lines, which is terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, and if you really want to win games, you have to have a sound power play. And Jacob Chikrin is that guy. You know, it, I mean, we were talking about Kalen Addison and how he's able to lead this team and, and up on the blue line, you know, and how he's he's got a couple goals recently on a power play. And But I, I really haven't been seeing, especially tonight, uh, a blue line presence. And I think that Chikrin has what it takes to to establish the size and the the movement up there. I think tonight I saw a ton of uh, like lousy passes to the sideboards where someone sits behind the net, whether it be Caprizov or Eck. That's what I was that's what I was seeing tonight. Um, and then they figure it out from there. It's always just this tight power play, whereas New York had this like one timer power play set up where they ripped almost everything they shot uh, they saw from the slot and 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 called it a day while Minnesota was just too busy lollygagging and I think you know what and and to solve all that madness if you have a strong defenseman up top I know Kalen Addison you know kind of a young guy young gun uh still waiting on a new contract kind of deal you know he's not like a staple um and if you get chicken who is a staple I think it can settle a lot of nerves and and someone who can really run the power play and someone who can really dominate. Um, and I think Chickren's that missing piece, but it's just like you're going to have to give up a lot, and it's going to be a weird trade. But if you do Dumbo one-on-one with another team without all the stuff we were talking about prior, you're not going to get a lot in return. So it's 
there's a, just a lot of what ifs going on. And I think it's a really interesting scenario. The wild are in right now. And, and here's the things you're spot on. Here's the things that I would like about, well, actually tease professional tease. I will tell you when we come back, some of the things that I like about the potential for this to happen uh, because there are some intriguing possibilities that this would put together. Again, the cost is going to be high, but we'll continue to kind of talk through this as we make our way through a potential Jacob Chikrin trade while also offloading Matt Dumba's contract. We'll talk about all that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Built Bar. And if you, like me, are trying to get your 2023 off on the right foot and you want a delicious snack where you don't have to sacrifice taste to eat healthy, Built Bar is here for you. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, to start, Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. You heard me right, 100% real chocolate. They also come in some unbelievably amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. The best part, though, we have been hyping up the fact that you can order Built Bars at Built.com anytime you want. There's a better option now. You can head to your local Walmart or Sam's Club and pick them up in person. Swing by your local Walmart or Sam's Club and grab yourself a delicious box of Built Bars today. If you don't have one close enough, Built.com still works. The main point, go get some Built Bars right now and start your 2023 on a healthy note with Built Bar. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wilds, once again, thanks for making Locked on Wilds your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol and Zach Zeman hanging out here for an intriguing look at a name that we've been linked to in the past, the Wild, that is. That is Jacob Chikrin. And whether or not the Wilds would offload Matt Dumba to bring in Jacob Chikrin in the event that maybe they don't want to, maybe they can't find a top six upgrade. And so here are the things that I like about this. Chikrin is 24. He's been in the league for like six years already, which is insane. Yeah. And so he has a pedigree already, as you talked about. He has a lot of time. He's played on the power play every year that he's been in the league. So he knows what he's doing there. He's also no slouch defensively himself. And so you have upgraded your blue line. You offload the Dumba contract. You also have two players in Middleton and Chikrin then who are younger than Jonas Brodeen and Jared Spurgeon and are going to be able to be maybe that next grouping of defensemen, at least until all the prospects the Wild have in their system yeah. are ready to come up. And even then, your third pairing with that locked in can be Kalen Addison and Carson Lambos or Jack Pert or... Brock Faber. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go get a veteran guy to fill that back end of your decor. It's going to be rookies who are going to probably give you better production because they're going to be hungry to make an impression in the league off the bat. Yeah. I, you can even make the argument and this might be really nitty gritty, but uh, you know, Spurgeon is the captain of this team. Let, let's not forget about that. He's obviously a leader um, you know, it might not sound like it on those uh, viral clips on YouTube or whatever, but you know, if you can get Chickern in here learning from Spurgeon and Brodeen like that, and and how how much of a staple those two have been for this Wild franchise, heck, I think that's a great investment, honestly. And I think that if you know Chickern's going to be here for a while, and you know he can improve his game on a much better team than what Arizona's dealing with right now, you know, it seriously is a a good investment if you put him around your great defensive. You know, you know, it's a team that you've had for, you know, this year, the top two guys, you know, like that. I think it's a great idea. And, and you know, it's it's just like it's it's going to come with a price tag. But um, if you really are, if you're just looking at this year only and, you know, you're, you think you're in a good spot. I mean, heck, let's just think about it. Like St. Louis is down right now. Colorado's a little bit weird right now. You can even make that argument. 
uh, the central still like a little bit of a coin flip. And if you really want that motivation, that new guy, we already got Reeves. So you got the whole physical part taken care of. You got Felino and Greenway if need be. Um, time to focus on the defensive side. Like, you know, I think I think it's a good I think it's a good little thing that that the Wild are keeping in their heads, and you know, it's just about how much are they willing to give up. But yeah, yeah point. that's that's the big key is the cost. And yeah. again, you look at it too. I think the desire to upgrade the top six is still it's a big one mm -hmm. but you look at what we've seen from guys in iowa sammy walker he's he's on a the same sort of trajectory as matt boldy was before he came up mm -hmm. where he's just torching the ahl and you know maybe there is a move made in the top six to where somebody is further alleviated from the mix to give him a spot to come in but then, you know, if you're worried about the salary cap and being able to maneuver all of this, you've got like three guys at Iowa right now that probably could play roles on this team. You're not going to have Ryan Reeves back next year. You're going to have to make a decision on Freddie Goudreau. You're going to have to make a decision on other parts of the lineup as well. But you've got Sammy Walker. You've got Adam Beckman. You've got Marco Rossi. You, you've got pieces to play with to fill those spots. So you're not going to have to go out and try to find somebody to fill in. So I think if you want to continue this stability in front of your goaltending situation, it's a substantial upgrade. Yeah. Let's just let's just say it how it is. Mm -hmm. It's a substantial upgrade going from Matt Dumba slash Alex Goligoski next to Jonas Brodeen and moving to Jacob Chikrin. That top four would probably be on par with anybody else in the division, mm -hmm. at the least. I mean, yes, I know you're not you're not going to beat out Kale McCarr. You're not going to beat out Roman Yossi, but you're going to be in the conversation, like top to bottom, as opposed to right now. It's like, yeah, that those top three that the Wild have are pretty good, but beyond that, it's a, a bit of a yikes machine. But mm -hmm. I don't know. There, there are more legs to this than the more you sit and think about it. You're like, yeah. the The thing that's interesting is Brock Faber was the guy, right? The guy, the new guy, the new thing, the new toy, um, and he's a defenseman. So this is interesting because if you bring Chikrin in and you 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 know you're gonna have to get rid of like uh you know and you got this new guy Brock Faber who's supposed to fill it uh this is what I'm thinking of um then you're gonna have to get rid of uh some some prospects or someone who has a big contract it, it, it's like it's gonna be weird it may be even a defenseman who knows you know it's like if you if you know if you thought Brock Faber was the guy before this whole chicken thing started um then what defenseman's gonna go or or what else is gonna get made so. Or, you know, I don't know. There's just a lot of – and the cap issues that are going on, it's it's really going to be, like, very, like, weird and tough to work around. But if, if it's, like, a three-teamer or, you know, like I said, I I don't know. It, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, a lot right now because you just brought up that point of, like, Brock Faber. You put Brock Faber back into my mind, and I'm like, oh, gosh. Um, could he – could we even see him go? You know, it's like if you're going to if you're gonna bring in a defenseman, you're going to get rid of a defenseman, and is Brock Faber the guy? Is Brock Faber the guy along with another first-rounder or, or two first-rounders or a second-rounder and a first? You know, it's just like a lot of a lot of prospects, or is it like a staple up on the top six that, you, that no one would ever think of? Um, it's just going to be really interesting. Um, it's – it's I don't know. I, don't, I just don't think you're going to get enough for Dumba 1v1. Uh, like a one-on-one -on -one trade, you're not going to get a lot. It's just right. like what we've been talking about all year. Um, and there's just reports of him uh, or just like speculation of him going to be gone before the trade deadline, going to be gone before you know it. Um, it's just about like, you know, and I think bringing in this chicken hole deal is going to get teams working like, oh, gosh, maybe maybe the Wild are willing to give away more than they, than they were anticipating and receive more. So – yeah, I, and it's interesting. It's oh gosh, it, it gets me going for sure. 
it's it's got my wheels turning too yeah. because if there's one thing that Bill Guerin is, it's looking at other angles for things that we don't necessarily like. We've talked about Unlocked on Wild a ton. Like, go get a top six guy. Go get a top six guy. And I I still say that that is something that needs to be looked at. But Bill Guerin is looking at this from all angles. And he may, he's probably of the mindset that, you know, we need to shore up defensively because we're getting good goalie play. If we can shore up defensively, that's going to take pressure off the offense. And it's going to make us more of a nuisance to play against because then in the, then in the postseason, let's say you make a few moves and your third pairing is Addison and Faber or Addison and Merrill. Right. You're going to end up playing Spurgeon, Middleton, Brodeen, and Chikrin like 25 minutes a piece. Like those guys are never coming off the ice. Mm-hmm. So it does. It doesn't really matter. Like I don't know. Yeah, that's that's very valid. I think uh, the maybe the Wild are too scared of what happened last year when Dmitry Kulikov got put in a spin cycle against <sighs> St. Louis, and they're they're trying to finally puzzle piece the defense that that was almost non-existent last year during the playoffs. <laughs> oh boy oh boy you had to bring that up didn't you? i just always have to i always have to show about this is why i'm happy i'm not an nhl gm because all i can do is make fun and make jokes and, and speculate but i'm not the guy calling the shots accurate well you know what we should do to try to answer the question of like would the wild be in position to make a move of this caliber let's look at the rest of january and see yes. what's in store for the Wild. We'll take a look at their upcoming games and see kind of where we think they will end up. See if they can, uh, you know, gain a little traction again to get themselves in good position for the trade deadline. So we'll do that as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild also brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info plus stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the NFL playoffs to the NBA to college basketball and the NHL, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, so head to their website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Locked on Wilds and all of our wide array of content your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol and Zach Zeman hanging out here today and uh, just taking a look ahead now to the rest of the month of January, just to see, you know, if we're, if we're going to be looking at making moves, do the wild even get themselves into position to be enough of a contender to do so? And so wild won against the Islanders grinded it out, gritted it out. Uh, Next up on Saturday is uh, a game against Arizona, which speak of the devil. Yeah, I mean, I encourage all Locked On Wild listeners to watch <laughs> Jacob Chickren's performance in that game and tell me if it's good or bad and if we should trade for him or not because that's going to be a huge deciding factor. If he can oh. shut us down, it's going to be a problem and we're going to want him for sure. Yeah, Bill Guerin's going to get a he's going to get an in person look to yeah. see what uh, what's going on with uh, with Chickren on Saturday. Zach, I'm of the belief that even with this being a little bit of a lull. For the Wilds, unless they fall into the trap game thing again, which we've seen at points this year, uh, I'm of the belief that this is a win. Arizona well, uh, on the road. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about it. But here's what I'm going off of: is you lose to Buffalo in overtime on a stinger, you lose to St. Louis on a slouchy game at home, you lose to the Rangers in a shootout. I mean, and you hardly beat New York like this. I think if you have and you have a day off tomorrow as the time we're recording this podcast, if you use that day off, whether if you use it to practice or use it to chill, I think if you come back against Arizona, this is your game. Like, this is your proving game. If there's any game you need to win right now, it's this game. And I think everyone's going to come together in solidarity and pound the Coyotes. And and it's just going to happen. If it doesn't happen, then we have a problem. Yeah, because um, listen to this. (laughs) 
it just it gives me heartburn to go through this stretch of games. After Arizona, the Wild embark on a four-game road trip starting on Tuesday. At Washington, at Carolina, at Florida, at Tampa Bay. And that will be a full week. They'll play the Capitals on the 17th and then play the Lightning on the 24th. And, you know, the Panthers are very up and down. It seems like every time they try to get traction, they end up losing their footing. Uh, Carolina, though, is very not up and down. you got the Tampa Bay Lightning on the road. Uh, that stretch is going to be one where the Wilds – and this is here. so here's where I'm at with this. I feel like this stretch, those four games, the Wild are either going to put something together to where we look at it and we're like, oh, my God, they just – they just ran the gauntlet. Yeah. Or it's going to be like, we'll get to the Tampa Bay game and say, I, I would, I will take a point. I'll take a goal at this point. Like, I don't feel like there's going to be any in between because that's just how this team has been all season. It's like, they're either going to just look like door busters or they're going to get their doors busted off during this stretch because those are some feisty teams, especially at home. Here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm looking at on the schedule right now is – for the first time, I swear, I always tweet about this. I always tweet about this. Whenever teams go on these on this road trip in the southern, whatever, southwest, oh, good, Mizzou education. <laughs> <laughs> whenever they go into Florida, they always play Florida and Tampa on a back-to-back. -back. Yep. I swear, everyone runs this gauntlet of facing these two juggernauts, former juggernauts if you want to include Florida, whatever. They don't have, like, no defense nowadays. Um you know, if you want to include, but look, you you go into Florida, you have two games off, and then you play Tampa. One of those games is going to be a win, and and if you beat Florida there, you're going to beat Tampa because you're going to be on a two game break. You're going to be fired up to go into Tampa. Um, you know, and I, okay, I'm sorry, I'm going out of chronological order for those who don't have a calendar in front of them. <laughs> so so you you play Arizona on the 14th. I you you better win that. You have two days off, and then you head to Washington. And I think Washington's a winnable. It's a winnable game. Um, you know, that it's going to be after a two-day break, you, you got rest, you got a flight to hop on, It's it's, and then you go play hockey. And then after you deal with Washington, you have another day break, and then you go to Carolina. One of those is going to be tough. I feel like they might run into a little road bump there. Um, but then after Carolina, you get another day off, and then you go to Florida. Um, you deal with Florida, you get two days off, and then you go to Tampa. So the, the common denominator here is a day off in between games. There's no back-to-backs. There's a lot of time for improvement. You play Arizona on the 14th, and then you play Tampa on the 24th. So there's a lot of space in between those games. And I think there's a lot. If you really want to improve this team, if there's any, been any time in the season to, to finally solidify lines, solidify the power play, it's, it's right now. It's against these juggernauts. Because yeah. this is not an easy stretch of, of away games. It's not a fun road trip at all. Um, but if you can figure it out and if you can win these games, the Wild are going to be successful and, and and ready for this trade deadline. And they're going to be just in prime position. And then you get, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this later. But I think if you can get past those four games with at least two wins, I think you're in a good spot. Because I was just thinking about this, too, and I don't know how this slipped my mind, but the Capitals, one of Kirill Kaprizov's favorite players, of course, Alex Ovechkin. And so Kirill's going to be looking to put on a show mm -hmm. in front of Ovi, his idol. And I don't know, maybe those, maybe we get to a game where those two combine to score like six goals total <laughs> or something. But That'd be a storybook. I, I do like I do like the idea – even though my my brain says like three and one or one and three, I exactly. think exactly it think can either can, go which way. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. It's I think all if about you can coaching. get to two and two, you'd feel really good about that stretch, and then you finish the month with the Philadelphia Flyers, who cannot get off the ground, mm. and an opportunity for revenge against the Buffalo Sabers. Yeah, I think I think Philly is like. A tougher team than most people think. I, I, I really, I, th I find them entertaining. You know, we were chirping them all off season about, <laughs> uh, you know, of about the moves they were making, Chuck Fletcher, blah blah blah, all that stuff. 
Um, but Philly, Philly's, they've got that grit. I don't know. I feel like I'm afraid of them for some reason. Uh, but that's at home. You know, you, you like I said, you, have, you haven't even had your home game since Arizona uh, in, in about over a week. So it's like once you come home again, it's refreshing. You're back in your own locker room for once. You know, it could be a good feeling. Um, and then, you, you know, a couple of days ago, as of when we're recording this podcast, you lost to Buffalo in overtime in a barn burner. And that was the craziest overtime I've probably ever watched. And you got some proving stuff to do. You, you know, you got to make improvements. And I think Buffalo is a beatable team. They they put it to us. Uh, you know, it's – I mean, that whole crowd was crazy. This is right after the DeMar Hamlin deal. Yep. Uh, injury and, and, and all that terrible news that was happening. And I think they rallied off of that. You know how many Bills fans I saw in that arena that night? It was ridiculous. That whole crowd was crazy. And I think it was one of the toughest crowds a while I've seen all season. Um, and, and I think they got to prove themselves against Buffalo. Buffalo is a beatable team, but when, and and when you're at home, I think you got to prove yourself. And I think Philly and Buffalo are two wins, but if you can, if you're struggling against, um, any of those four games on the road, Washington, Carolina, Florida, Tampa, you gotta win those games at home. Those are must wins. I, I would like to see, and, you know, not that the first two periods were, um, great against the Islanders, but if you're going to, if you have to kind of reach down and find something and grind it out to like a two to one or a three to one win on the road, those are the teams to do Mm -hmm. it against. And so Mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I, I was completely caught off guard by that little ripple in regards to Jacob Chikrin. So glad, glad we had a chance to discuss it and we'll see what happens because Again, Bill Guerin's the one holding all the cards, and he probably has three or four other deals in the works that we don't even <laughs> know about yet. So we'll see. But uh, it just makes it fun to be able to uh, to recklessly speculate as to uh, what things would look like. But, Zach, appreciate the time. Thanks for uh, hopping on, as always. And listeners, make sure you follow us every single day of the week. We have new episodes. We have pregames. We have postcasts. We have other content as well, so make sure that you make Lockdown Wild your first source of Minnesota Wild news and information to get your day started right and for us to guide you through the rest of the season. We have new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.